Welcome back. In this final video of our series today, we'll show that the angle between a tangent and a chord is congruent to an inscribed angle on the opposite side of the chord. Now, again, we'll say this more precisely and then we'll, we'll take a look at a picture to make it crystal clear. We're going to suppose that the line passing through B and C is tangent to a circle omega in which AB is a chord. And then we're going to uh, take a look at the angle ABC and the angle ADB where D is a point lying on omega on the opposite side from the segment uh, from the point C. Now let's make this uh, a little bit more visual by taking a look at a picture. Here's our line L passing through B and C. So BC is a tangent to the circle. AB is a chord. What we're saying is the angle ABC is equal to the angle ADB where angle ADB is an inscribed angle that uh, uh, goes from A to B by way of the point D. D lies on the circle on the opposite side of the chord AB from the point C. Now, because this is GeoGebra, we can drag things around. Uh, we'll take a look here at uh, what these angles actually are. And uh, we'll see what happens if we were to move these points around. Now, if we move A, around so that the chord gets a little bit smaller. You'll see that the uh, angle between the tangent and the chord shrinks, and so does the angle across the circle from it, and it's the same, the same value all the time. Okay? Now this happens if I move the point B as well, so the tangent is kind of spinning around the circle, but the angles are the same. And uh, if I move the point D, it doesn't actually matter where I move the point D, as long as I'm on this side of the, the segment AB, the angle never changes. It's the same as angle ABC. All right, now how do we prove this? Well, let's start with our picture. And uh, let's start with a preliminary uh, theorem that we'll actually need in the proof. This is another important theorem. Um, it's equivalent to Theorem 11.3 in data's text, um, but we'll say it in a slightly different a bit of language. The theorem says if ADB is an inscribed angle in a circle omega having center O, then uh, D lies on the same side of the, uh, the line passing through A and B as the center, then the degree measure of ADB is going to be one half the degree measure of angle AOB. Oftentimes, geometry texts will call this a central angle, and we know that ADB is an inscribed angle. And so you might say this by saying that the inscribed angle it has one half the degree measure of the central angle. Now, to, uh, to play with GeoGebra a little bit, um, here's our, our picture, and we can see that that's, that's true as well. If we go ahead and display the, the angles we currently have, you'll see that the angle alpha, which is the central angle, is twice as large, um, you know, subject to round off error, as the angle beta. And if I were to kind of move the point D around, it doesn't actually change. This angle will always be one half of the angle AOB, as long as D is on the on this side of the segment, the invisible segment, segment AB. Now, if I were to move the, uh, the points around, I can change the central angle, but you'll see that the inscribed angle is always exactly one half. Now, interestingly enough, if we were to uh, make A and B exactly opposite each other, if we were to, to make a 180 degree angle, or close enough there, you'll see what this shows is that if we have an inscribed triangle uh, whose, whose one side is a diameter, you'll see that the central uh, angle being 180 leads to the other angle being a right angle. Now, we're going to apply that theorem that the central angle is always twice as large as the inscribed angle in our sketch of the current uh, theorem we're trying to prove. So again, the setup is that BC is tangent, AB is a chord, and D is any point on this side of AB. We're showing that angle ABC is congruent to angle ADB. Now we'll start as we usually do by talking about the center of the circle. We'll let O be the center, and then we will draw radii out from B uh, to O and from A to O. 
Now, by the first theorem we proved today in our video series, OB is going to be perpendicular to the line BC. Um, and we're also going to know that, um, well, we'll be able to say based on that, that this is a 90 degree angle. Angle OBC is 90 degrees. We'll know that angle ABO, this angle right there, is complementary to the angle ABC. So its degree measure, ABO's degree measure, will be 90 degrees minus the degree measure of angle ABC, whatever it is. Now we can say all this because uh, these are complementary angles, and these properties, that 90 degree angles are exactly right angles and vice versa, uh, these are things that we assumed uh, sort of in our measurement theorem. We, we stated that these should be axioms of degree measure. Now as we take a look at the, the triangle, AOB, you'll see that it has to be isosceles because OA and AB are both radii, so they're the same length. Now what that means is, uh, by a previous theorem, that these base angles of the isosceles triangle are congruent. So angle ABO is congruent to angle OAB. Now what that means, because angle o, uh, ABO was known to have degree measure 90 degrees minus the measure of ABC, we will now say that angle OAB has that same measure, 90 degrees minus the degree measure of angle ABC. All right. Now, as we take a look at um, what we can say so far, we know that this is a triangle. We know the degree measures of these two angles, and therefore that will allow us to say something about the measure of angle AOB. Namely, because uh, triangle measurements, uh, triangle angle measures always sum to 180 degrees in Euclidean geometry, that central angle will have degree measure 180 degrees minus 2 times the uh, 90 degrees minus the measure of angle ABC. And when we subtract this, do the simplification, we'll find out that angle AOB is, uh, has exactly twice the degree measure of angle ABC. Now we're going to use our theorem we just talked about, the inscribed angle measure versus the central angle measure. We'll conclude that angle ADB has measure exactly one half that of angle AOB which means that angle ADB has exactly the same degree measure as angle ABC by our previous theorem. Now, angles with equal degree measures are assumed to be congruent. This was one of our axioms of measurement, and so we conclude that angle ADB is in fact congruent to angle ABC as we claimed. All right, with these theorems in mind, uh, please take a look at the homework problems. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you on Monday.